Hi, I'm John Foro from ABI. I'm excited to talk to you about two brand new tools we have to offer. So the first one is actually all pertaining to high voltage electronic batteries. So we all know that the actual battery packs can actually become out of balance and also we can get trouble codes in a hybrid or an electric vehicle. And a lot of times, you know, our scan tool will direct us to the actual pair of cells in the, if it's a actual hybrid that's actually bad. If it's an electric vehicle, depending on how they're wired, maybe a pair of cells, maybe an individual cell. So the problem we have is there's a lot of people that know we can actually replace an individual cell, like the one I'm holding up here, and possibly not have to spend that incredible amount of money, you know, usually $1,000 or more, depending on the type of vehicle, to go ahead and service that battery pack. But the big deal is, this one here happens to be out of a Toyota Prius. They're supposed to be about seven and a half volts. Now this is a bad cell, but for demonstration purposes, it gets a point across on how to use a tool like this. Even if it was fully charged at seven and a half volts, it would definitely not pass in a valid test once the scan tool starts interfacing the computer it would want to fall down and always have a weak battery block in that case since it's a Toyota um, it will always have a weak battery block and it's always going to be throwing trouble codes in it for you so it's real easy to check the voltage you know you got two terminals a positive on this side and a negative on this side and we could get an available voltage reading off of it but like I said, even if it was seven and a half volts, remember our car battery could be 12 volts, but when we apply our load tester to it, it wants to fall on its face and then the vehicle doesn't want to crank properly. So let's go ahead and actually show this first tool. So you can kind of see, comes in a nice little black box here. And basically what this is, is this is an actual load tester for an individual battery cell that makes up a high voltage battery pack. So you might be saying, hey, there's some, ma some manufacturers on the market that have a combination charger and load tester for the entire battery pack. But again, you know, we don't know which one is bad. We might have one bad cell. We may have, in this case, since it's a Toyota and a lot of manufacturers will group two cells together and call them a block. Are they both bad? Is only one bad? Can we get by with changing just one cell? So this is a pretty simple concept. You can kind of see there's gonna be a button here that's going to apply the load once we hook it up. And obviously the red and black jacks on the top are gonna to be where we put our voltmeter in. So we can get an overall battery voltage reading. And again, the one we're using for demonstration purposes is a bad cell, so it's not even gonna have seven and a half volts in it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of prop this up I'm going to take my red lead coming out of the black box. I'm going to clamp it to the battery positive here, my black lead to the battery negative. I'm going to put my voltmeter on volts, and I'm just going to put my leads in the two jacks there. So right away, we see that this cell is 1.877 volts. So like I said, it is a bad cell. But even if it was 7.5 volts, we all know that doesn't really mean a whole lot. We want to apply a load to it. So when I push the load button here, you can see that voltage drops down to about 1.2-ish volts. So rule of thumb, just like when you're using a 12-volt battery tester and you're applying a load to it, we always knew that for a 12-volt battery, it shouldn't drop more than about three volts after 15 seconds. Well, with this, with such smaller amperage hours in an individual cell here, because remember, we're testing individual cells as opposed to the complete battery pack, we'd want to not see, with that load button depressed, we'd want to not see the battery drop more than a half a volt. If it drops more than a half a volt, that means even if I could fully charge that individual cell, that's going to still set trouble codes on a high voltage vehicle and you're not really fixing anything in that case. So I know there's a black market out there that people are buying these individual cells from places like Facebook, Marketplace, and eBay, and possibly even buying a whole battery pack from a junkyard so that they can have a whole bunch of individual cells that they can always charge up and put in where they need to on different applications. 
But again, without actually doing a load test on it, we don't really know if it's a good battery or not. So that's the benefit to having a, a little tester like this. It's a little battery load tester. To the best of my knowledge, there's no other ones in competition that can test the individual cells at, a, at an affordable rate. You know, Some of those ones that the manufacturers are creating out there that double as a charger and a battery load tester, some of those things are you know, several tens of thousands of dollars. This is way more affordable for a shop like my, my own here. Another tool that I'm excited to talk about, this is something that is kind of changing in our industry. This is nothing more than a camera tester. So this camera tester, you know, it will test backup cameras and stuff along those lines, which have been out for many, many years, but it will also go ahead and test the ADOS calibration cameras. So I was recently called out to a body shop vehicle was in a collision. They went ahead, they could not, they were trying to do an ADAS calibration. They determined it had a bad camera. So they bought another camera, they put it on, and it still would not do the calibration. There was, the camera was not working basically. So there's always that level of doubt when we're dealing with this, because we can always test the voltages going into the camera and stuff like that. But the actual video out input was always a very hard thing for us technicians to go ahead and test in the past. So just a quick little overview of this tool. There is a battery that is inside the monitor here. So we got the little 110 plug that you can charge this battery pack of this particular monitor. We also have on the very top over here, it actually has a BNC style connector. Most of the backup cameras will use an RCA jack. However, you may occasionally get some ADAS cameras that are going to require you to hook up to a couple pins. So to kind of keep the cost down on this, we developed it so that we have the two video pins here on the side. So nothing more than printing out a wiring schematic, if that's the case that you're trying to figure out which terminals of that camera to connect to, you can actually just plug this right into the top of it and actually plug those into the two video output ones. But I do happen to have an actual backup camera here this is one that a uh, customer's coming in to install later on this week on actually a trailer to, heck, to help them back the trailer up a little bit easier. And you can see that the backup cameras a lot of times are going to default into the regular RCA jack. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn and plug that into the RCA jack on the top. Now we need to power up the camera. So on the back side of this also, we have two sets of power leads. So the one with the yellow connector here, they're clearly labeled is a five volt power and ground and it's got a little voltage regulator that regulates the power down and the other one is a 12 volt so some of the ADAS systems out there on some of the vehicles use five volts some of them use 12 volts the backup cameras almost always will go ahead and use the 12 volt setting so we simply just go ahead and turn the monitor on here it's going to tell us that there's no signal and since we're dealing with the backup camera I'm just going to use the 12 volt inputs and I'm going to just connect to the positive ground of those wires here. It's a little easier to do if this actually had connectors on it, but it's not a big deal. I can get this accomplished fairly easy. And I'm going to turn on the switch that says 12 volts. So we got a switch for 5 volts out and a switch for 12 volts out. I'm going to turn on the switch for 12 volts and now no matter what I point this at, I'll kind of angle this so the camera can see it a little bit easier. No matter what I point this at, this will tell me a quick go or no-go test as to whether or not the camera itself has the capability of sending a video output signal out. So at this point, we would already have tested the powers and grounds and all that, so it's a real quick, easy way to go ahead and do this. Now, this, this monitor gives you a couple of examples here where I could zoom the picture in and blow it up and stuff like that, but you know, from a technician standpoint, we're not really going to be messing around zooming it in. If you wanted to, you could with this monitor, but we're primarily testing, we're primar primarily using this tool to test to make sure that the video output signal from whatever camera device you're using is actually valid. So these are two new tools sold exclusively by AVI, and if you have any interest, be sure to check them out on the website. And like I said, these are way more affordable 
than what the competition has. And to the best of my knowledge, there is no competition for the camera tester. Again, my name is John, and thank you for watching.